All right, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to The Witcher Circus, and today I'm gonna be playing with the Halo comp. We're going back to the roots. I've been playing all this Immortal Musketeer nonsense and uh, all the defensive stress teams, right? All that sort of stuff, and I feel like since my break, I kind of have to relearn the circus a little bit, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, I will say one thing, I feel like I saw real, you know, the real me, that uh, YouTuber guy, really cool YouTuber if you don't know him, but he mostly makes base game content, has like 8k hours in Darkest Dungeon, but... Uh. Ahaha, it appears that the buffoon is flummoxed as we go straight into a rematch against the same person. You know, just the classic Putter Circus desync, what can you do about it, right? But I was going on this... Oh, I'm gonna go second now. Oh, of course I go second now. Oh, I just love the circus, man. Now I should surrender to... Oh, it was a desync, guys, trust me. Alt F4. Nah, it's alright, it's alright. Uh, I might not have to go battle battle this time around, but I still want to go battle battle. I was hoping that maybe I'd get the dodge here. You know, with my 55 dodge, but not only does that not happen, wow, that's a almost guaranteed chance to get the debuff. Yeah, but what I was saying about real, is, <laughs> 50 stress, Jesus, is that I think he played against this person actually, but um, we'll see, we'll see that in a second. Now, I am, there is a very decent possibility I just get hurt really bad here, but I do have some defensive characters. So I think I'm still going to drop the Battle Ballad. I don't like the amount of dodge they have on this Grave Robber and this Houndmaster, so I still think this is the best move, even though I could have potentially like just moved to position 1. I don't have solo. If I had solo, I would do it. I would solo to position 1. But since I don't, I'm just going to have to rely on my remaining dodge. And also, I mean, this is still a 65 hit chance, right? This team absolutely sucks for accuracy. And, and throw dagger is throw dagger. It's not the worst thing in the world. And I, I guess I could flare here, right? Right, flare is an idea in this situation. It's a pretty good, a good idea. Let's just, just do the flare, man. <laughs> just get rid of that minus 20 dodge. I think it's perfectly okay to flare at this point. Maybe I should have flared first. Well, you know, this is why I'm going back to the Halocon, because I haven't played it in quite a while. So I need to I need to relearn it basically. I still have 55 dodge here, so I'll be very hard pressed if that uh, doggy does actually land the blow. But here's what's gonna happen: I'm gonna drop a big stunning bow on your cultist because I cannot whiff, and then I'm gonna drop a big finish him on your cultist because I also cannot whiff, and it's really gonna hurt. You can deny me that by just going for a, by just going for a guard, but my opponent sees that as not a bestest of moves and is gonna suffer a fair bit with that occultist not having his turn on turn two which is really good for me because now they're they're, they're gonna be they only have one healer and while they do have a guard i have an extra 20 accuracy so am i hoping that the stun goes through Yes, I am. I'm hoping that the stun goes through. I have a guaranteed stun chance with the double accuracy trinkets. With the battle ballad, my accuracy on the crusade is just completely nuts. And I still have three. Or I still have two attacking moves here. Of course, if I go finish him, they heal. And then I just can't get the kill that well. But I will probably just go for the dark sap. Keep in mind that they have a flare. Oh, they don't have flare, actually. They have sniper's mark. <laughs> what a garbage ability. Who would bring sniper's mark? Yeah, well, it's what they have, so I could... Ah, uh, uh, there's a few ideas here, but I think the best one is just a Dirk Stab, right? Uh, I, I was thinking maybe Caltrips. I love the Caltrips. Drop the Caltrips so he drops the Death Star in his own and also get more pressure onto the opponent's side. But I'm just going to do this. They're going to heal. I'm going to finish him because it's going to do... It's definitely going to do 7 damage with the amount of HP he's got. And after the finish him, I will not go first. So, you know, that's kind of a situation here, but I will have Finale, and I will also have a Sniper Shot to drop either on the Grave Robber or on the Houndmaster, whoever I see fit to shoot here. Considering I have an, a guaranteed hit chance, actually, wow, just barely guaranteed on that doggy, despite the 47 dodge, uh, I'm just gonna go for it because he had the lowest HP amount, so sadly not a kill, but 
Yeah, it's the cultist is a bit screwed, especially if you don't click him to get the heal. Oh, no, that's a disaster. Yeah, he's just gone. At the very least, in that situation, you have to click the, the occultist to heal yourself or something. You're probably still gonna die, but you might get a crit for 30, and then you stay alive. And then your Houndmaster dies, of course, but, I mean, at least you stay alive, right? And they surrender here, because I was just gonna finale the doggy, and then stun the Arvalist, and oh, it's just a complete disaster, but let's go prepare. Match number two. Hank! It's off, Hank! Don't do it, Hank! Yeah, it's uh, a Breaking Bad reference, maybe. Oh my god, it's Hank Schrader on the enemy team with kind of a Halo comp, except it has a Highwayman. So, wait, isn't this actually, what do you call it? The, um, the Jane Moon team, right? The damage one? But it's it's being played entirely differently. There's no uppercut. This is a Stress Crusader. I don't know what's going on here. This. Uh, this all looks like very funny shenanigans. I could still battle ballot in this situation, but I kind of don't want to do that. Um, I'm probably going to get stunned, but I don't want to go for the 80. I don't think that's too wise, so instead I'm just going to go for the come hither onto this musketeer. Let's just try to disrupt her, but we failed the 75. Unfortunate, you know? That's really all I can say here, is that this is an unfortunate turn of events. I'm going to get stunned now. Oh, no, I am not going to get stunned. I'm going to get Snellus. Well, that's, that doesn't put any immediate pressure on me. But I guess that does allow me to just go battle battle here and guarantee that I have a hit chance on everyone for, for the entire duration of the match. I really like battle battle. I don't think you just have to go ham and just go count. I mean, just go harvest in this situation. Just strike with that bleed and, you know, probably whiff both of them. I think you can take a turn to go battle ballot against... Uh, against a team like this, especially if you miss, or rather if you don't get the pull on the Musketeer. If I got the pull on the Musketeer there, it would be sniper shot into Dirk Snap. But since I didn't get the pull, then, you know, I have to play this uh, a little bit a little bit differently. So I'm gonna go for the stun here on the Crusader, even though it just tickles, and I almost do... I do like 40% of the damage to myself as I did to him just by clicking because of that Caltrips. So the Caltrips is a very good ability, but I think that I might be able to finish off the match before it gets any real value. So the Bounty Hunter there could have gone for a come hither, pretty much ensured that um, I would not get the big sniper shot onto this Musketeer, but instead of doing that, they go for the mark with the Musketeer, they're gonna go for the pistol shot, which even if it crits, I'm pretty sure it does not do enough damage. And now their Musketeer just drops to their store because she no longer has her move, she doesn't have the self-heal, and my Bounty Hunter will very likely just go for the big strike start of next round because they do no longer have their healer. They do decide to go for the Duelist Advance, so I will not... Uh, what do I call it? I will not go for the Caltrops here because I don't particularly want to eat her paw, so I will instead just go for Come Hither, and this is when the steam that my opponent has just really doesn't feel good. And this is where Halo shines, right? It's fighting against, <laughs> fighting against the rookies that have these just slightly the slightly off-putting teams, like not having to heal there on the Musketeer, just doing one misplay, going for the Call the Shot, maybe going for the Caltrips, they're also not the wisest move. And now it just, just feels completely over for, for Hank here, it's not a good spot to be in because I got the first kill and I still have Finale. I am in position to, I'm ready to get Finale, I have a character advantage, I have the mega stun chance with the Crusader, I have two healers, one of them cures bleed, one of them is a double healer. And this just feels really, really terrible to be playing if you're my opponent right now. So they go for another duelist advance. I could stun into here, but then they click and the stun just goes away. So instead I'll just go for the 70 on the Crusader. It does land. That is a very big stun landing on that Crusader. He does not get to play. They will go for the come hither here. It does just enough damage, actually. <laughs> it does not get the pull. I guess that's just the problem of having, uh, you know, not having the best trinkets. Because quite unlike most trinkets, the um, Red Harris Net is quite literally a worse version of the of the grappling mitts. Usually you have uh, you have a bit of a down downside to the character specific trinkets. Like for example, if you're gonna look at my circuit blade here, 
yeah, it's basically Brass Knuckles, but better. But there is a bit of a downside to it. Is that it's plus damage melee skills, while Brass Knuckles is just plus damage generally. So, you know, it has an advantage. Piercing Quarrel is a hell of a lot better than Eagle Eye Talisman, but Eagle Eye Talisman does give you the plus 10 accuracy, right? So there's still a bit of a of a trade. With the Grappling Mates, no, it's just straight up worse. Just straight up a worse ability than that, um, uh, rather, a worse trinket than that Red Heron Snit is, which is sad, honestly. I feel like this this trinket cannot receive too much love, because it's already a very good trinket if you put it on an Abomination, but uh, I feel like the Grappling Mitts might be a little bit overpowered. It's kind of the meme, right, with, uh, with the Grappling Mitts finisher Bounty Hunter. It's the meta, it's what everyone's bringing, because it's just so damn good. And I think in this situation, because I've already used my heal, maybe a bit... Uh, maybe a bit wrongly. Maybe I should have gone for the heal with the Crusader rather than rather than with the Arbalist, but yeah. Well, a bit a bit too late to do that. I was kind of just too focused on criticizing the grappling bits being an overall superior trinket, but I get to just Dirk Stab into Holy Land, here, Crusader goes down to zero, and now if he heals he gets hit with a, with a stun and he's definitely dead. If he zealouses, he's dead. If he stuns my bounty hunter, maybe he lives. And he also gets some counter pressure, but he's just gonna go for the zealous, which means he is, he is dead. But uh, he, he's not dead immediately, I still have to heal here. But I have more actions than you do, so this is just gonna be a beatdown. Uh, a classic beatdown with the hail comp, so I'm just gonna skip along to the end. And there we go, all it took was to finish him and my opponent to realize that they had already expended the caltrop so they couldn't kill the bounty hunter to just go for the surrender, so let's go straight into match number 3. Well, we're gonna go into match number 3 against a novice unfortunately, but this is where playing the Halo comp just works a lot better for you than the Immortal Musketeer. If I were playing the Immortal Musketeer, I would still be in match number 1. <laughs> With this one, I'm gonna go into match number 3 and I'm gonna hopefully finish it off quickly. My opponent... Oh, oh god, <laughs> Sanity's Bane on the men at arms. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna subject you to this. And well, it did not take too long, it's gonna take 8 rounds, but my opponent is finally gonna go down. They they tried, you know, they definitely tried. Looks like it's a person that just pretty much just came from the base game, assembled a team with their favorite characters and thought, you know, let's go to the toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, with whoever we find in the circus. But, you know, unfortunately, they, they tried guarding characters at this store, they were unaware about some of my quirks and perks that uh, my team has, but I think they will improve because they definitely played, well, due to their abilities. So let's go for match number four. Well, and here we go again, this time against uh, yet another Sanity Spain, except this time it's by a higher man in the stress team, so it might actually work here at least a little bit better. Now, unfortunately, I go second, as I do. Uh, which means I won't be able to just completely punish my opponent for having an occultist and an abomination backlight. This is something you cannot do, uh, unless you have some sort of circus cheat to always go first, because your occultist will get pulled, and then your abomination is in position for your occultist is in position too, which is about as bad of a situation as you can get. So my opponent is learning the ways of the circus through slamming the bounty hunter, the position two character. This is what you always do if you go first with the strength team. You slam the bounty hunter uh, because if you don't, you get hit with a crit holy lance. So it feels really terrible. But if you do, you put the bounty hunter in the position where he can't use his uh, very good move to finish him. He's, he doesn't want to use it round one, of course. Maybe not even round two, but he's definitely going to want to use it at some point. And to get him back into position, he's either going to have to move, which sucks because you did damage to him, you applied horror to everyone, and you repositioned yourself and got a damage buff while he just passed, essentially. Or he's going to have to, or the enemy team is going to have to use a ball, which also sucks. Or they're going to have to drop a finale before they really want to do, which also sucks. Everything sucks if you're playing the circus today. <laughs> well, I'm putting a bit of a pickle here. I wonder if I should battle ballot. Honestly, I don't think so. I'm gonna go for something a bit crazy here. I'm gonna move forward twice. Bird Sharp, your bounty hunter. <laughs> yes, I know. I know the bounty hunter is now in a bad position, but it's a gamble. I'm. Oh, please miss. Okay, there we go. That would, that would have been disastrous. My 55 dodge just counts for nothing, right? 
I'm gonna go for this. I was hoping it would do enough damage with the mark, and then I could potentially just get a stunning blow, death blow. Or, you know, at the very least, uh, put the occultist at this uh, to death's door, which is what I'm gonna get regardless. So this is an okay-ish spot to be in for me. Definitely could have been a better round one, but, you know, that's what you get. Sometimes you go... <sighs> I was a bit worried that could happen. You know, the 85 hit chance, I was a teeny tiny bit worried that could happen, but I did not expect it to happen. I thought, you know, I could bow ballads, but the, the most amount of dollars they have is 15, so I'll be fine, right? I'll be fine, yeah, no, Chef, you're not, you're not fine. This does not look fine by any interpretation of the word fine. I suppose I will just have to go for a come hither here. And pray that I do 3 damage, which I do, and also pray that they heal for 0, or something akin to 0, such as like, I would say like 1 to 7. 1 to 7 should should be it. They're gonna try to guard, <laughs> of course. They're gonna go for the guard, even though I have Bola, I have Zealous, most importantly I have Dirk Snap with Finisher. And they still go for the guard here. Shepard's a newbie, stop bullying him. I see, it worked, right? They have the novice RNG. It, it is what you get. You just get novice RNG when you're, when you're playing circus. Which is good that, that the newbies do get the novice RNG. If they didn't get some novice RNG, then it would just be a complete slaughter. With this, it's not a fighting chance. So why are you complaining, Shep? Don't be, don't be a meanie. Okay, I'm gonna go for the ball here since I failed the first death. Well, this time it's a 40 and we get it with a crit, which actually still knocked the man at arms back, but got rid of the corpse. Now the high man is in position 1, where he will have to PBS. He went from position 4 to position 1 awfully quick, but I don't really mind. I could stun him, but I don't want to, so I'm just gonna drop the stun on the man at arms and just try to, you know, kind of. Uh, turn the tide of the match again. I'm probably gonna go for a mark for death into a sniper shot. If it crits, I get the kill. If it doesn't crit, I'll go for the finale and then get the kill. So my opponent goes for the beast smile instead of going for the stun on my arbalist, which, I mean, it is gonna hurt me a little bit, but it tells me that the abomination is 99% surely dead. Unless somehow my sniper shot doesn't do enough damage. I did get the crit, so now it's gonna do even more damage because the arrows is just fair like that. I, I, no, her, her max roll should do enough damage. She doesn't even need a crit in this situation to get the kill. They do get a crit on my Crusader as well, but he wasn't low enough HP regardless. It is just enough if I get the max roll, but. I, I get the crit, so it's a-okay. They, they get the crit as well, but I don't think it's gonna matter. <laughs> I have a 90% kill shot with my Dirk Snap in this situation, so you definitely go for the Dirk Snap here, not the, not the finale. If they weren't dazed, then maybe you go for the finale. If they weren't dazed, then maybe. If it, were a, if it was a 60 and they weren't dazed, then sometimes you'd go for the finale there. Just to make sure that you get the kill that they don't get the second transformation of. Uh, because if you're already winning, then why would you want to win any harder by, you know, potentially throwing the match at the same time? It just doesn't make sense. I could have gone for a stun there on the higher man, but I kind of don't want to get hit down to zero. Because he does have a fair bit of damage here with the Hunter's Charm and with the Vendetta. He is going to bring one of my characters down to zero, so we're fine. We are fine, everything is A-OK. -okay. I do have a good target for my stun now, but I kind of want to use this sniper shot. I have two crits on her, so I think I'm gonna go for a heal here with the Crusader. I don't imagine there's enough light on me. Yeah, it's fine. Like, with two crits on the Arbalus, she's a character that you really want to use that sniper shot for, because just shooting normally is essentially a crit, so... You know, why would I not go for it? I'm gonna get two afflictions though, so this is gonna be fun. I go masochistic on the transfer, that should be okay. And the Arbalist goes masochistic as well and moves forward. Oh no, it goes rational, that's even better. Alright. Now, I will go for the mark here and watch this Arbalist just completely throw the match in, in one move. If she passes now, and this was more of an optimized strength team, it would be GG, but... 
Uh, thankfully that doesn't happen. I go for the sniper shot, even with the irrational and the bell debuff, I still do almost my opponent's entire health bar without a crit. He self-hits, which puts him down to this, though, which means I have to go for the finale here. Sadly, my opponent will just script shot blast, and because they had the sanity pain, I was very likely just dead. So just getting a confirmed kill there on the higher man is a hell of a lot better, especially when he's still 2 HP. So just do that, and now it is a 1v4. I have seen men at arms win 1v4s, but my Crusader would need to be at, like, uh, an extra 100 stress for my opponent to still win this, so I don't think they have too much of a chance anymore. And we'll actually just caltrips here, because this is what you do. You slowly bleed your opponent down to zero. You don't throw the match here, right? Uh, because it can happen. You can throw a match even from a position of advantage such as the one I am in, because the Jester just oofs himself, the Irrational does like another bad act out, and imagining these two characters were afflicted already, and imagining that they already had like, you know, five bell debuffs stacked on me, which is what they should have been doing since round one, it was stacking bellows. But since they weren't doing it, then I, I still have, uh, I still have an almost guaranteed chance of winning here. Of course, I have the Rally to the Flame, this is... This is like the training wheels of the Butcher Circus. You, you just get this, you learn this, and you know that this exists for your team and for the enemy team, and then it's completely atrocious that it exists. <laughs> it's a heal, healing two characters, regardless, no, no limitations on it, you just do it, you get rid of debuffs, and at the end of the match, they can cause a heart attack on two characters, then you just do this, and yay, everything's a okay now. Yeah, it's just, um... It's just a really annoying move to play into, and it's kind of just the crutch of the Crusader. He's good early game because of his stuns, and he's very good late game because of because of the rally to the flame, but also because of his stuns. The, the stuns are also very OP in the late game. I could have dropped a, a flare there, that's what I should have done, but I'm too focused on on how outrageous the Crusader is to, to, actually, to actually care, and I guess I'll just... <sighs> Do I give my opponent a kill on the on the jester? You know, what? fine. I'll, I'll let you have the the one prestige point that comes from getting the kill on the jester. My opponent definitely needs it. He says, "God, you just just kill me already." Says so this poor jester, you know. And I'm just gonna skip along to the end. Well, isn't that funny? My jester actually dies, and I have three irrational characters, just three bozos, uh, resting here. And yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that's actually, oh, that's actually so, so freaking bad, because I had three characters to kill that man at arms, now I have zero, <laughs> because getting rid of the corpse is just absolutely horrible for me there, oh my god, yeah, that's, that's another round I'm gonna have to eat bellows, and look at this, I'm almost losing here, <laughs> because of this freaking man at arms, being so damn annoying to deal with. And I did attrition him down with man at arms, at least, at least a little bit, right? Uh, I, with man at arms, with caltrips, yeah, at least I attrition him down a bit. Can you imagine if he was spamming bells since round one? And if the enemy abomination had Wretch's cloak, I would just die, <laughs> it would just be over. The moment that I didn't go first and then a cultist was just able to do whatever he wanted after I also failed a thing or two, it got really rough if my opponent had some better things, but sadly they didn't, and that's gonna be the end of it. Well, 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 it would seem that we might have met our match, because I'm going against Vorpal with the third, and they have a dodge team. Well, not a full-on dodge team, but they have some dodge uh, attributes to their team, and they already misplay round one. <laughs> Za. So if you go first against a Halo Cop and you have a dodge team, and you have both Puncture and Demon's Pull, you make sure this Jester doesn't get Battle Ballad, right? That's, that's the logical thing to do. You don't click the bolster button. Uh, you what before you get stunned? No, that's not gonna happen. They're gonna go toxin trickery here, which Really makes me want to drop the cultures because they already used the toxin trickery But no, Shep, contain yourself. Go for the correct moves. Pull the, pull the occultist. He's a very annoying character. Please pull the occultist. <laughs> Don't go for the cultures. I know you love it. I know I love to spam the freaking cultures. It is just so much fun. They go for the pull with the character that has the 50% chance rather than the character that has the guaranteed chance. So that's 
that's really gonna come back to bite them because now I'm gonna do the sniper shot, which sadly doesn't do enough damage. But it should be okay because even if they go for the pull here, I will stun them down to this. Or they don't even go for the pull; they go for the weakening curse, which I guess is just a bad move. I, that's all I can say. It's just a bad move, especially when you have to pull trinkets so you have more horror. You could say, but like, oh, it's gonna make her do less damage the next rounds. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> She's, it's gonna do more stress. No, it isn't. The horror would do more. And now you just stun you at this door. You still have to go first, but what are you gonna do? Guard? I have Dirk Snap and Sniper Shot, so no, he's dead. There's nothing you can do there for your cultist. So if you wanna play a team like this, play with Antiquarian, not with a cultist. So let's go for a match number five. I'm not entirely sure. Alright, and here we go straight into what will be the final match, and this time it's a Blade Doctor Occultist duo. So this looks to be a defensive strength team. I was like, should I really show this? This guy is like apprentice. But then I saw men at arms with Pit Fighter Sam Insignia of Rank, and I was like, oh, okay, this guy knows what's up. This guy knows that uh, you press bell if you want to win matches, right? That's the meme, you press the bell button. Now, I have a few decisions here. I think decision number one is very obviously going to be to yoink this Plague Doctor out of position three, because if you're playing against Plague Doctor and you let her get a couple of those play grenades in, you can say goodbye to her HP. If you let her get a couple of those blinding gases in, I guess you can say goodbye to your accuracy, but one flare just gets rid of all of it, so yeah, I, I still think the, the play grenade is a bit more threatening, but. Well, the, I do that, and now she can't even do anything in position 1, which really sucks for my opponent. I also really wish I had solo here again, but since I don't, I guess I will just go for the... I could stun the men at arms in this situation. Yeah, I could stun the men at arms. I kind of just want to move back twice. That's the thing, right? But before I do that, I think we just... We prevent one bellow. We prevent one bell. We go for the stun the man at arms here. She, she's out of position. I, I don't feel like stunning the plague doctor here does too much. Especially when w one shot will just bring her down to zero. Oh, that's a misplay. That is a massive misplay. Why? Because now I just move forward twice and drop the sniper shot, and she's very, very likely dead here. I mean, there's still heal, heal, but um, you don't want to. <sighs> You don't want to be in this spot. Now, it, the thing is, if you heal here, I just shoot you again. So you go down to this torch and it's a wasted move. If you don't heal here, I finale. And you're down a character, but... Uh, they're gonna go for the very good move, which is the disorienting blast. Uh, you know, kind of using the return before they die, but... Yeah, sadly... Uh, sadly for and also preventing the finale, but sadly for them that doesn't happen. So now I am free to just go for other things. One of which is a harvest, but I'm I'm kind of worried that doesn't do enough damage in this situation. So instead I'm gonna play it a bit slower. I don't want to waste the finale just yet. What I want to do in this situation, hopefully, is kill the plague doctor without finale and then finale the occultist. If I get that, I win the match on the spot. If I don't get that, and just take too long killing the second character after the first one, these bells are just gonna destroy me. It's gonna feel horrible. The bells are gonna absolutely just shred through me, and I cannot allow that to happen uh, at the moment. So I'm gonna go for the Dark Savage here, which does just enough damage, the 6 to 11. I could have gone very, 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 very poorly for me, but now I am a tiny bit safer. What my opponent could do in this situation is guard and pray that the ball doesn't get the death blow, or Ray that the Bounty Hunter doesn't get the caltrips, but I feel like my opponent's gonna go for a bit of a safer move and gonna go for the weird reconstruction first. Keep in mind, if they had Stitch and Embrace here, it would feel really bad for me, but they're actually gonna go for the Vulnerability Hex. That is a bit surprising. They kind of just give up on the Plague Doctor here to get the Affliction on me, also knowing that I don't have a guaranteed kill shot, so it does make sense to go for that. But if I bell, if I bowl here, they are forced to guard. Uh, or else I'll just get the kill. So I think I'm actually gonna go for the caltrips because I can't go for the caltrips after the guard. It, it, the chance that I get the death blow is very, very small because the protection just almost completely nullifies the chance that I do damage with caltrips. So I don't really want to do that. So instead, I'm gonna drop the caltrips before going for the bola and just enjoy myself in this situation, right? I'm gonna reposition as well, put my 
Arbalist back where she wants to be. Hopefully knock the occult the Plague Doctor Corpse back so I get the occultist back in a position where I can stun him. But sadly that doesn't happen. I think my opponent is gonna go for another pull. Or no, they're gonna go for the suppressing fire here. I'm thinking oh no, that's bad. <laughs> that's not what you wanna do at this point. I don't think that's what you wanna do at this point, honestly. But it is what my opponent goes for, so I'm just gonna try to bully their occultists a little bit here. I'm gonna stun him, I'm gonna do all sorts of bad things to him. Of course I'm not gonna shoot him, because he's in position he's in position one, but you know, with I am masochistic, so it's not that bad, but yeah, I would be able to do a lot of damage if I went for the mark, but if I did that and you know, I after after they pull me which is almost a guaranteed chance. I could Holy Lance, but Holy Lance would damage debuffs into prot. Yeah, not too goody. So I'm not gonna opt into that. I'm just gonna do something else entirely. I'm gonna go for the Stunning Blow here, which was an 85 again, but yeah, this time it works. Do they have Flare? No, they don't have Flare. I don't understand what is it with these um, base game gamers not bringing the Flare. Or the Ball in this situation, actually. You're just bringing the Sniper's Mark because they're playing relatively well for you know having uh, having some odd choices they're making my life kind of miserable here because of that occult is just being kind of strong in the situation as well as the man that i was being a freaking pain to deal with yeah that's what he is he's a pain to deal with i don't have to heal myself just yet my damage here is you know non-existent yeah it's completely non-existent i'm gonna go for the flare instead get rid of those damage debuffs and now actually hurt this occultist with my dark snap thankfully they haven't really been able to do too much aoe pressure i they, they weren't able to bell round one and uh, they don't really have an abomination to just transform and go crazy on this stress. They don't have a doggy to hound Sammy, even though these two characters were quite high pressure. If this was a doggy, and this Arbolst was a bit more defensively focused, because the suppressing fire really isn't doing too much for you. If she was more defensively focused, this could actually be a really, really annoying team to deal with. Though, at that point, you just kind of choose between the occultist and the doggy and instead bring a flatulent <laughs> and that's just gonna be a pretty decent defensive uh, defensive stress team so at this point they heart attack me i am masochistic but it doesn't cause a self hit so i'm just going to heal myself and now i have heart attack recovery which is pretty good i will take extra stress because it's suppressing fire but it will be a-okay in this situation i feel because i'm very close to dropping the finale actually i'm not what what happened to this chester why do you only have two buffs what the? Ow! It's round four. Did he get stunned? What happened to him? I genuinely have no idea. Oh, I moved, didn't I? Maybe I tried to move to go for a repositioning play or something? Yeah, I think that's what happened. I moved with the Jester. That's why his finale isn't, uh, isn't really that strong at this point. Do I want to drop the finale here? Uh, I will want to drop it eventually. Yeah, I think we just, uh, we just go for the stunning blow here. I mean, I, I don't have to drop it, but I will I will do it. I didn't have to, but I will do it. I'm just going to put my Bounty Hunter back to position. I'm going to pull the, the Arbalist as well. Everything will be A-OK -okay here. I don't think their Man at Arms can win against my Crusader. That's kind of the thing. I'm just high rolling on the Crusader being completely overpowered. Not to mention that not only does he have the Rally to the Flame and the Stun, he also has the Virtue Chance, which is just outrageous that he gets the Virtue Chance on top of being such a powerful character. It is, in a, in a sense, balanced. Because because with, even with the Virtue Chance, sometimes you can still lose. And even with the Virtue, sometimes you can still lose because some Virtues are way more impactful than others. And that's when we get into Courageous. I've been back to the Butcher Circus for almost a week now, but I still haven't r gone on a rant about the Courageous Virtue. And I think that's about to change today. I think I will rant about Courageous today. <laughs> yes, I will. Courageous absolutely sucks as an idea. It should not exist. Now, before I actually do that, I really need to think my life through here. Unfortunate, unfortunate situation. I was kind of put in a spot there, whether I want to sacrifice the Arbalist, whether I want to drop the ball immediately, just start DOTing my opponent, you know, what the hell do I want to do here? But I saw that they're still marked. 
I can save her with the heal, so I was thinking, you know, I heal, then I move forward, then she shoots, and then it's just the man at arms, and just against just the man at arms I will be fine here. But, you know, that's not what happens. I go masochistic, that's okay, and I will still try to move forward here. It would be hilarious if my Arbalist just moves forward now with the masochistic. It would be absolutely hilarious. Come on, you know you want to, right? You know you want to do the funny moment. You know you want to completely screw over two of my turns, actually. <laughs> Not one, but two of my turns. Might that be the desync? Might that actually be the desync that I'm experiencing here? Now, in any case, the match was over, because even if she does do the, the funny move forward, I will just move back twice, and of course I, I might lose the Arbalest, I might lose the Arbalest, but I do have the Caltrip soon to just start duting my opponent down to zero. Once the Arbalest goes to position two as well, she's completely useless, and she will go to position two, this corpse is about to dissipate. So she's gonna go to position two, she doesn't have the heal, she doesn't have the suppressing fire, so no stress move, no support move. She she would have bullet normally, which would still suck, because it sucks in this situation, but she doesn't even have bullet, so no, she's just non-existent as a character. I probably should have you know, focused on that previously, instead of just trying to go for the sniper shot, but then it's just a man at arms and he's gonna be getting attrition down by the Harvard, by the Caltrips, so it would be GG anyway, but anyway. I hope you all enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers!